Namaste everyone here at BookTube. Welcome to my channel, Hamsavahini Bajra Astra. I'm Ohuna. Today's video is going to be about my TBR for the readathon, which is currently ongoing, Black Ovenathon. It commenced from the 1st of October 2020 and will continue to the 31st of October 2020. Now this readathon has been created and put together by Brie from Lock Day Petition and I've posted a link to her announcement video in the description box below. So in case if you would like to know more about this readathon, do please check her videos. Now uh, there are a total of 10 prompts which all focuses on the writings of black authors under different categories and genres and I have chosen books which are mainly on my Kindle uh, uh, edition however or the Kindle edition of these uh, works and what I have done is so in order to avoid me scrolling the Kindle I have tried to jot down the main summary plots which you see at the back of the uh, of each book so that it would be easier for me to read out because if I start scrolling my Kindle it's going to become um, you know a really extended video so to cut it short I will be uh, reading out uh, the summary plots which I've written so that you can um, be aware of uh, the books that I'm reading which I'd like to share so in case if anybody finds any interest in any of the books or would like to read it or would like to use it for this readathon you definitely can uh, check these books out now uh, the first uh, prompt was to read a fantasy novel written by a black author so for this I have chosen the Jumbies uh, which has been written by Tracy Baptiste and uh, it's a spine tingling tale which is rooted in the Caribbean folklore about an ordinary girl who must use her extraordinary bravery and a bit of magic to save her island home from Jumbies the scary spirits which haunt the forest and Corinne Lamer who is our main protagonist isn't afraid of anything not scorpions or the boys who um, tease her and certainly not jumbies because uh, jumbies are just um, made up or their stories which are made up by trickster parents who want to frighten the children then one night Corrine chooses or chases and a gauti all the way into the forbidden forest and uh, those shining yellow eyes that followed her to the edge of the trees uh, couldn't belong to a jumbi could they when corinne spots a beautiful stranger speaking to the town witch at the market the next day she knew something unexpected is about to happen and when this beauty who was called severine turns up at Corinne's house to bewitch her father, Pierre, to claim the entire island for the Jumbies, Corinne must call on her courage and friends and learn to use ancient magic she didn't know she possessed to stop Severine to, and save her island from the Jumbies. So this looks like an interesting read and it's um, actually for middle grade. Uh, it's a middle grade read written by a black author which I really loved. So. Um, I will be reading this book for the first prompt but the second prompt is to read um, a book by a trans cure or a binary non-binary author and for this I have chosen to read uh, the novella called The Deep by uh, River Solomons now Deep is a collaborative project and there are three other authors who are involved but the main author is River Solomon so I've chosen this for this prompt and the next prompt which is to read a book which involves black mermaids and black sirens now um, about this the plot points are I've just reached the plot points over here so I'll just share them with you it's a very interesting um, story so in the deep uh, written by River Solomon's uh, features Yetu, who is a mermaid, and she holds memories of her people, water-dwelling descendants of pregnant African slave uh, women who were thrown overboard by slave owners who lived idyllic lives in the deep. Their past, too traumatic to be remembered regularly, is forgotten by everyone save for one, the historian. And this demanding role has been has befallen upon the shoulders of Yetu. Now Yetu remembers for everyone and the memories, painful and wonderful, traumatic and terrible and miraculous, are destroying her. And so she flees to the surface, ex escaping her memories, the expectations and their responsibilities and discovers a world left behind by her people long ago. Yetu will need her people to survive and to reclaim the identity by reclaiming their memories and who they really are so this looks like a very interesting read now the next prompt which is prompt number four is to read a mystery book written by a black author and for this i have chosen to read the Gyaha incident by patricia canterbury and uh, it's really about uh, the our main protagonist who is jamaican wong um, who is a biracial tracer which means that um, they are earth homicide detectives and they're assigned to galilee 
Galileo, an orbiting space satellite to investigate the unusual deaths of human and non-human dwellers. So are, they, are the deaths related and is there a new disease? Is someone or something trying to start a war? Uh, Jamaica and her colleagues seek answers for the same. So this would be a short um, synopsis of the plot summary of uh, the game. Gerha incident as they call it I may be pronouncing it wrong so my apologies for that now the next prompt is to read a thriller book written by a black author and for this I have chosen to read when no one is watching by Eliza Cole I don't know much about the plot points of this uh, except the fact that it's a psychological thriller and when it comes to thriller what I do is keep the synopsis apart so that I don't uh, really lose the thrill of reading the book because uh, if I start reading the plot points or the summary which is written at the back or about the story then I start uh, my mind starts um, trying to work out the entire mystery which possibly could be uh, the main um, reason why the book exists in the first case so uh, I don't want to really look into that so which is why there will be uh, no plot points that I would give but I've heard that um, this particular book by Eliza Cole and it has a sequel of uh, which uh, has come out uh, there's a sequel to this book which has come out as well so let me see how this goes when no one is watching by eliza cole and if i really like this book i will definitely go on to its sequel now the next prompt is to read a historical fiction and for this i have chosen a novella by uh d p de J, i'm sorry p p jelly clark i'm really sorry my pronunciations are a little uh, mismatched it's p jelly clark and um the book which i have or the novella which i've chosen is the haunting of tram car 015 now um i believe that this particular novella has uh, won a lot of awards this year uh, inclusive of the hugo and the nebula awards and i am quite um, interested in reading this because uh, p jelly clark's works are actually um, astounding and they are fascinating so I have heard book reviews as well as um, there was a recent book review which was done of his work by um, um, the channel of Thistle and uh, Chloe from the channel of Thistle and Verse so I really loved it and his work is really good so I'm looking forward to reading this now it's a historical fan uh, fantasy fiction and uh, there is an alternate universe and um, it's Cairo and the year is 1912 and the case started as a simple one for the Ministry of Alchemy enchantments and supernatural entities handling a possessed tram car uh, soon however agent Hamid Nasser and his partner agent Omsi Yusuf are exposed to a new side of Cairo stirring with suffragette secret societies and sentient automations in a race against time to protect the city from an encroaching danger that crosses the line between the magical and the mundane so uh, this is going to be an interesting novella to read so um, once I finish this I definitely will um, try and make a review on it and it's absolutely uh, this is actually one the Hugo, Nebula and the Locus Awards, uh, they are the finalists for 2020, which is this year. So let's see how that goes. Now, uh, the next prompt is to read a book which discusses intersectionality by, the, by a black author. So for this, I have chosen to read The Hood Witch, which is um, a collection of poems which has been written by Felita, uh, I believe, uh, Felita Hick. And I have combined this with the next plot. Uh, I'm sorry, next prompt, which is to read a book which involves a black witch. So I'll just let you know about uh, the Hood Witch. Now, Hood Witch is a debut uh, from uh, the poet Felita Hicks, which means it's a collection of poems which is de depicting a particular story. It's a reclamation of power for black and non-binary people whose bodies have become the very weapons uh, used against them. It tells the story of a young person who discovers that they are something that can and will survive a whole century of hunt. Hicks speaks about giving up her child for adoption, mourning the death of her fiancé, embracing the non-binary femi body, preserving, uh, or, yeah, preserving in the face of medical malpractices, domestic abuse and police violence. These poems find the people transformed or remade out of smoke and iron into cyborgs, wolves, witches, machines or simply beings capable of seeking justice in a world that refuses them the option and it explores the intersection of modern mysticism, Christianity and Afrofuturism uh, in a 
sometimes urban and natural setting. Now he also finds a place where everyone everywhere is hands in the air, where you know they're gonna push and pull it together and just like they learned too. So it is a place of natural magic where someone like Hicks can have more than one name, where they can be both dead and alive and both a mortal and god. And in its evocation of witchcraft, this book provides further examples of efforts to reclaim the magic of witchcraft and demonology from the accusers and repurpose the language to assert a femi vision, emphasizing uh, specifically black diasporic relationships with witchcraft and also attending to particular violences and precarities that haunt black girlhoods. So this is a very good read and I believe um, I'm going to really enjoy it and it's going to become very interesting. Now the next prompt is um, to read uh, the group reading, uh, the group read book which is uh, by James Baldwin Gayawani's Room and the last option or the last prompt is to read um, an underrated black author and for this I have chosen to read uh, The Wife of um, Gods by Quake Water. I don't have the book with me at the moment, but then uh, this is um, an underrated Quake Water is actually from Ghana and he's a mystery uh, fiction author and uh, he has written a lot of works, but his uh, works has not been recognized so far. So um, I would definitely try and read uh, one of his work, Wife of Gods, which is very popular under this particular option. So those would be the 10 books that I'm about to read uh, for this. Um, particular readathon and I understand that I've been posting this a little late I've already started some of the books uh, but uh, the one thing that I'd like to mention which I have discussed with Brie who is the creator of this readathon as well is that I will probably not be able to do the wrap up for this particular uh, readathon in time which is in the first two weeks of November because I won't be uh, present uh, probably from the last half of the last week of October to uh, the third week of November because uh, uh, it's festival time here in India and it's Diwali and it's uh, I won't be able to get back till the last week of November so I will come back and then do my wrap-up for this particular readathon so I have discussed this with Brie as well from Lofty Petition and uh, she has agreed upon it so those would be the 10 books which are there on my TBR uh, for this particular readathon which I'm quite excited about I will get back to you in another video so till then um, Take good care of yourself, have a good reading week ahead and namaste.